how to find happiness, which is of course the biggest question for everyone. Uh, the first step is to make soul. It means to make everything that is possible on this side and also beyond uh, the great threshold and meet in a boundary that has no time and space. Um, so in being in life, but already embracing uh, uh, death before rebirth. So what does it mean? that we need uh, uh, to lose everything uh, before gaining everything. So we need to lose the old parts of us uh, first uh, in order to meet the sacrum, in order to meet the sacrality, the sacred uh, aspect of life. And that as well is an image and um, it's the uh, fundamental manifestation of the great imago. So death comes first and then there is rebirth for the soul because uh, um, this is a symbol of the sacred uh, uh, doing. And so we need to understand that in order to uh, co-create with us, with the spirits, we need courage. The second step is knowing ourselves, which is of course uh, extremely uh, difficult. And this is where we have this guide, uh, this spirit, the, the one that is the so-called diamond in the um, oldest Greek uh, philosophy. And uh, uh, it's uh, an expression that uh, uh, can be uh, highly associated with uh, uh, happiness because uh, happiness comes from the Greek world uh, eudaimonia, which means being in a company of uh, uh, a good diamond, of a good spirit. So we need to be able to listen to the voice of our spirit uh, and be guided by him, by, by her, uh, um, and uh, being able to understand uh, the language that our guy spirit uh, is, uh, uh, is using. So, um, of course, uh, uh, what we need to understand uh, is that uh, he or she or it, because of course he has no sex in the way we, uh, we see it, uh, talk to us through images. That's why we need to learn how to read the images that come into our life. If with images, I mean events, happenings, whatever is coming to us, they are tools for us to go through the self-knowledge. Then the step three, I would say, it's changing our way of thinking. So developing a poetic mind, developing beauty, in order uh, uh, to be able to listen to the voice of our uh, uh, guide. So we need to be able to go out uh, of the dualistic view of good and bad, uh, um, in order to free ourselves from the judgments, from anxiety, from fear, from distractions. And again, the poetic mind is achieved through uh, emotions and imagination. So uh, each of us chooses uh, our uh, diamond, our, our guide spirit. But of course, this choice is influenced by the karma, by which is connected with previous lives. So if you had, uh, for example, a life of power, um, you choose to want more and uh, you choose the life of someone that is like a tyrant. So of course, this is bringing on more suffering. And um, there is also, as a, uh, as a fourth element, uh, the fact of recognizing which is your myth or your archetype. Let's say there are many archetypes that we have in our life, but recognizing which is the myth that you are playing, the role that you are playing uh, in this life. Of course, you can take archetypes, uh, images, roles from the tradition that is more uh, is nearer to you. That can come from the Greek tradition. That can come from the Burmese, Burmese tradition that can come from any tradition in, uh, in the world and recognize through uh, the help of your spirit uh, what are the things that your soul needs to work on. Of course, there are a variety of myths, there are a variety of archetypes uh, that uh, are present in our destiny, uh, in, our, uh, in our life. Um, and we need to uh, understand that also there is nothing, no events in life uh, that is perfect. That's why it doesn't exist bad luck. They are all uh, events, uh, they are imperfect. So like each flower has a, um, an element that is not perfect and still it represents the beauty and we would never say that, that the flower is imperfect. But then when the, we see disturbances, when we see things that uh, in our life don't work, we grab 
we are attracted by them and we focus on them so they keep growing uh, uh, and more and more but they are again happenings events spirits through which our uh, our diamond our guide is speaking to us and is saying to us pay attention to this pay attention to that make a change and when we don't understand they just keep coming coming and coming in different forms till there is the one that uh, uh, grab our attention so we need in a very simple way uh, to become able to listen uh, uh, to our spirit uh, and um, we know that our mind through the analytical process is uh, covering the, the, the voice of, uh, uh, of our spirit, of our uh, uh, gods. So we need to be able to keep that silence so that we understand the connection. So we don't need to look at every single event on its own. We need to be able to feel the whole energy when something is coming to us. Uh, we need to uh, be able to reconquer this sense of uh, uh, of beauty, which is something that's highly expressed in uh, uh, in art, you no, know, in the aesthetic experience. Uh, it's the, which is the experience of the sacred of love, uh, uh, and so bringing back the sacred into the world through uh, the experience of beauty is what really we uh, we need uh, as we are explorer as a spiritual explorer in the um, in this world and um, all the events that are happening the the sad the deep events which are the, uh, the awesome images they are the so-called samskaras but um, our soul is connected with uh, the poiesis, is connected with the poetic mind. So we uh, are living uh, in a world of projections. So our mind thinks that something is true and uh, uh, we are convinced that this is the real world. And uh, when we are in a spiritual uh, um, environment, in a spiritual mood, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a situation where things are too, uh, too good to be true, we always uh, expect to go back to reality, where uh, there is a balance of both elements. But uh, in this way, we are creating a division. So we are creating a, a, a judgmental way of living because we see the distinction. While we need to be able to think that we are the co-creators of our own destiny, we need to stop to become victims. Uh, we need to uh, see that everything uh, uh, is connecting and also uh, understand that wounds uh, are uh, a way for, 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 for which our psyche, our body, our soul needs to understand something. So because they are uh, a symbol that is coming to us, they are again uh, uh, lessons. Um, and then uh, as a last element uh, to, to find happiness, we need to have faith, which is not faith in something, it's faith in the process, faith in the universe. Within that, we also need to have faith in our organs, which is, uh, for example, they are, uh, they are uh, in, uh, in, the, um, in shamanism, the organs are the ancestors. So they preserve our memory. And if we want to go back to the origin of, of, of time, of the mythical time, uh, the, the, our organs were gods. So they, become, they have become material objects uh, out of a need of, of, uh, for control and, and power um, that the, the man wants to um, represent, to exercise over nature. So it's... Uh, uh, it's not it's not true that uh, the brain or the heart they are material objects only of course uh, um, if we take an organ in our hands uh, it has a we perceive it as a solid object uh, with the, with its own weight uh, with its own volume um, but then there are the senses uh, behind that the seeing the hearing touching uh, tasting and smelling uh, they are they are mental events so when we touch when we smell when we hear uh, our mind filters that experience and translate that according to uh, to our schemes so to uh, to the schemes that is used by the matrix but by by the system in general so our mind wants to have this control over nature wants to have to this control uh, over uh, over these gods